There are a lot of ways in which we can talk about size. For example, we can talk about height, as we might measure the iPhone's height of 5.7 inches. We can describe area as you compare square footage of properties that you might be considering to purchase. We can talk about volume as you measure liquid ingredients of your favorite recipes. Sometimes we may even think of size in terms of weight, as in this book on the left is going to be a lot worse to carry than this one on the right because it's a lot heavier. Today we'll consider how we can measure the size of a set, which is a little different though possibly just as familiar. Consider that the English alphabet has 26 letters. There are also 7 days in a week, or 12 months in a year, and there are 151 original Pokemon. In a way, with each of these, I'm using these numbers to describe size, specifically the size of these sets. Whether that's the set of letters, months, Pokemon, etc., we can describe them by their respective number of elements. Now, in set theory, we give this a fancy name, we call it the cardinality. The cardinal number, or cardinality, of set A, which is written N of A, is the number of distinct elements of the set, and this is how we're going to measure size in set theory. Let's note that when we write N of A, it's read N of A. This is similar to F of X, if you're familiar with function notation. You can loosely think of this like N for number and read the number of elements of set A. And for something like W equal to the set of days of the week, this works well as we would write N of A equal to 7 since there are 7 elements in that set, right? 7 days in the week. Let's pay attention though to the specific wording of this definition. In particular, I want to emphasize this phrase distinct elements. Essentially, this means that we ignore repeating elements. For example, if we were given the set A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, then N of A is equal to 4, but if we were given the set B equal to 2, 4, 6, 6, then N of B is actually equal to 3, since there are only three distinct elements. We don't count the 6 twice. In fact, it's generally best practice when working with sets to write B is equal to 2, 4, 6 instead, excluding the repeated six altogether. Now that we have a sense of how to determine the size of a set, we can explore what it means for a set to be greater than, less than, equal to, or equivalent to another set. And yes, I'm stating equal and equivalent separately on purpose, as they're actually not just synonyms. Let's explore that distinction a little bit. When we say two sets are equal, we mean they are quite literally exactly the same they have exactly the same elements. We say set A is equal to set B, written A equals B, if A contains exactly the same elements as B. Equivalent, on the other hand, only refers to the set's size. Specifically, set A is equivalent to set B if set A and set B have the same number of elements. In other words, they have the same cardinal number. N of A is equal to N of B. So for example, if A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, and B is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, then we would say A is equal to B. And also A is equivalent to B because they have exactly the same elements. Notice here that two equal sets will always be equivalent. If they have exactly the same elements, then they must have exactly the same number of elements too. We could similarly examine 2, 4, 6, 8 and 2, 6, 4, 8. These two sets are also equal. It's important to recognize here that the order the elements are listed doesn't actually matter. It's the content of each set that counts. Finally, say A is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, and B is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7. These two sets are not equal, since, for example, 2 is not an element of B, but 2 is an element of A. They are equivalent, however, since each has four elements. They do have the same cardinality. Now, these ideas of cardinality and equivalence prove pretty manageable for smaller finite sets. We can count up the elements in A equal to 2, 4, 6, 8 without too much trouble. However, this isn't necessarily the case with really large sets or especially sets that have an infinite number of elements. If we considered a set like x such that x is greater than 5, 
We'd be out of luck in time if we tried to determine the cardinality by simply counting each element. The same would be true for things like the set of real numbers or the set of integers, etc. Instead, we say that this set has an infinite cardinality. Now, there's actually a lot more nuance to explore here, so much so that this topic really deserves a separate video on its own, so we'll leave this here for now. But for now, there is a lot more that we'll be able to explore in terms of equivalence when it comes to sets outside of just counting their elements. Consider this parking lot. There are some parking spaces, there are some cars. My question to you is, which is there more of? My guess is you were able to determine this pretty quickly. How? If my assumption is correct, you probably didn't sit and count each parking space and then count each car and realize that 24 spaces is a bigger number than 19 cars to draw your conclusion. Instead, you likely just observed that each car is in a space and there are still some spaces left over. If so, you have great intuition, because comparing sizes relatively in this manner is another useful way to determine equivalence. If we match each car to a spot and there are spots left over, the set of parking spots is larger. On the other hand, if we match each car to a spot and there are still cars left over, then the set of cars is larger. If we happen to match each car to a spot and each spot had exactly one car with no leftovers on either side, then we can say they are equivalent. This is what we call a one-to-one -one correspondence. For example, if A is the set of natural numbers from 1 to 15 and B is the set of even natural numbers from 2 to 30, are A and B equivalent? We could determine this by listing and counting each element or we can recognize that we can create a one-to-one -one correspondence between them by matching each element of set A to an element in set B. For instance, if we let every element in set A correspond to its double in set B, we'll have one with two, two with four, three with six, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 15 with 30. Since each element of set A is paired with exactly one number from set B, and each number from set B is paired with exactly one element from set A, we have a one-to-one -one correspondence and thus set A and set B are equivalent. This method can prove particularly useful when thinking about infinite sets as well, and I'll note here that some infinite sets are actually bigger than others, but as previously mentioned, we'll pause here and save this for another video. So although this is just the beginning of the story, Hopefully this video has started to help you get a feel for how we can think about the concept of size in set theory, in terms of the number of elements of a given set. If you do have any questions, as always, don't hesitate to post them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.